Hi there, my beautiful subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and I am here today with the Pisces full moon update that's happening on the 1st to 2nd of September 2020 depending on uh, whichever place you live in, where uh, you are in this world. So uh, this lunation, the full moon in Pisces in Deccan 1, 10 degrees, is uh, conjunct by, you know, the knob of 1 degree to my natal moon, which is 11 degrees of Pisces. So it's an energetic signature I'm very, very familiar with. So I will break down in great detail this upcoming Pisces a full moon for you but before I begin let's start off with a mantra we've had a lot of energetic shifts with the Lionsgate with Comet Neowise and now we have Ganesh Chaturthi so it's it's like a really powerful time for all of humanity to sort of rewrite okay the the script of existence rewrite go create the script of existence it's a very very powerful time for that so without uh, much uh, without wasting any time let us begin with the mantra om ek dantaya vidmahe vakra tundaya dhimahe tanno bud all right so uh this full moon in pisces is happening on the 10 degrees of this sign now we know that pisces is a very very complex sign ruled by jupiter in traditional astrology neptune in modern astrology I look to Jupiter as the ruler of Pisces because it just, you know, makes more sense. There is just so much of the archetype and its association to Jupiter that, you know, it just, just uh, elucidates itself easier. So uh, this is uh, happening in the first decan of Pisces. Pisces is, of course, uh, often considered the dumping ground of the zodiac very complex very intuitive very dreamy very uh, much of an artist a spiritual artist and uh, this uh, this lunation is ruled by jupiter in domicile but by venus okay if you look at uh, the term or the bounds in hellenistic astrology it's ruled by venus okay and uh, since this is in Deccan 1 of uh, Pisces it's again by Deccan Pisces Jupiter rules this nation so there's a lot of Jupiter and Venus and a beautiful mutual mixed mutual reception happening which I will get to later so expect uh, your feet toes to be very sensitive is expect your pineal gland to be very active so pineal gland activation is about messages from the world of spirit this is the third eye the the very powerful uh, indigo chakra the Ajna chakra okay so this is a, a time of true connection because you know since it's ruled by Venus um, through term we can see us needing to connect and who is the higher octave of Venus Neptune who happens to be the modern ruler of the astrological sign of Pisces it's mutable water okay uh, mutable water it's feminine it's yin so it's downward trending as in it's receptive okay uh, the main aspect is the full moon sextile Uranus so Uranus being the higher octave of Mercury and Mercury is also very involved because he's in Virgo opposite Luna during this full moon Full moon in Pisces okay and Mercury is in domicile rulership as well as exaltation rulership so uh, Pisces is feminine like I said dark moist quite wet uh, water element is wet right uh, by corporeal many offspring right uh, mossy 
scaly. These are descriptions and significations from Vatius Valens and I find them very, very intriguing to work with. So when I uh, do charts, I also make notes like this and I think a lot of his work makes sense to me. Scaly, sinewy, scaly because of the fish. Even Pisces in the Vedic system is known as Meena Rashi, uh, Meena, you know, and, and their eyes are like the fish. Very, very sensitive, uh, very, very um, expressive eyes, almost like a fish, okay? Now think of the belief of Pisces, two fish anchored together and both are swimming away from one another. So there is a, a dichotomy that is at play with Pisces, an inner conflict that is very visible. Humpback, so correction of posture of the natives is very important with Pisces because it rules the feet. So feet are directly responsible for your posture, the way you keep the arch of your feet, flat-footedness. All of that is, is the, the domain of Pisces, if you ask me. Leprous two formed again that that duplicity like the Gemini motif. Okay, the two fish and the two twins. Right? So so there is this this two facedness about Pisces vacillating between two two polarities, you know, unable to oftentimes find meaning with clarity because also Mercury is in detriment in Pisces. So it's not a sign which is very analytical and Virgo it's his polarity. So, you know, immediately you understand the significations and you can see how uh, Pisces is not a left-brained, analytical, logical sign. You know, it's very, very intuitive, very, very otherworldly, may I say, uh, because I'm at a loss of words to really elucidate the energetic, fantastic signature of Pisces because Pisces tunes into phantasmagoria you know into into phantasmal lands and they can see spirits and ancestors there's a strong connection to ancestors with with the Pisces native mobile very uh, mobile because of the mutable signature mutables like I told you extreme changeability but unlike the cardinals, the mutables adapt easier. I mean, Virgo is the best adapter and the best optimizer, but Pisces works in a very subtle, etheric, akashic realm, okay, which, which we can tune into this vibe. So because of this, two fish swimming away literally tells us that there is a lot of inner conflict, a lot of inner conflict, okay? Uh, especially if you're a Pisces sun by day. And Pisces suns are very conflicted because again, sun has no essential dignity in the sign of Pisces. So think about it. Moons, I would say makes you fantastically uh, prone to imagination. Very, very good uh, with music. Pisces again ultimately has this tremendous connection of music because Venus is exalted then. Venus deals with music. So yes, Taurus, Libra, great with music, but Pisces understands the subtle uh, energy, the subtle energy of musical vibration, which I think is just fantastic. So very changeable energy, very sociable, sometimes lewd, licentious, salacious. Uh, with some limbs missing according to balance. So he's noticed that oftentimes Pisces natives may lose limbs because again that poison and the drowning, very huge possibility of poison drowning. Okay, oftentimes with Pisces native, this is a uh, fascination for death. Okay, not in the scorpionic sense, but this this wants to be a part, wanting to be a part of the world of spirit. Uh, we can see that play out with Pisces, okay? Now, cause of wandering, says Valens. So, it's not a sign that's very grounded. It's a sign that likes to, you know, uh, move around, merge around. So, it's a wanderer, bitten by the wanderlust bug, right? Uh, varied. In all sense, mutables are very, very varied, right? Uh, changeable fortune because you know although it's ruled by Jupiter 
the the great benefic, the great fortune. Now Jupiter also rules Sagittarius, but Jupiter in Sagittarius is expressing himself through fire, through yang energy. But uh, in Pisces, Jupiter is expressing himself through yin energy, through feminine water, wet, moist energy. Okay, so there's a difference in how Jupiter reacts in uh, Sagittarius uh, as well as in Pisces. Uh, sexy, literally Valence uses this word sexy. So there's this Venus again, the exaltation of Venus and Venus being, you know, ruling the re sexual organs, the reproductive organs and, you know, sons of fornication as ancient texts call it. So there's a lot of fornication with this, this uh, sign, right? There's a lot of uh, sexual craving, but it's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, kind. It's, it's about deep deep spiritual connection that is what Pisces is looking for if you ask me the truth uh, thievish thievish Pisces sons especially thievish okay because the sun doesn't have any essential dignity so it's it's it can be very problematic and in the Pisces sons are men a lot of them are very very conflicted they need grounding they need balance and oftentimes you know Stuff like shibari or suspension or breath suspension or breath work really works for these natives, okay? Now, uh, prolific, no matter what they do, it's very prolific. Relationships, bam, prolific. Creating art, prolific. Uh, look at me, I have made about, you know, 1.5k videos on YouTube, not boosting each individually and not worrying about how many hits it's going to have because I'm a prolific person. I've got about 1500 posts up there, written posts. Again, okay, tons of material on Instagram, Pinterest. So, prolific is an energy signature of this and popular. So, it makes natives very popular, this uh, particular Piscean energetic signature, right? Now, according to Valence, the middle part of Pisces is very moist. Okay, so phlegm, the phlegm related issues could be a problem, water retention could be a problem, over emotional, okay, over sentimental, getting attached to something, unable to move on, or you know, that is there. This very moist can, can uh, show through physiologically, psychologically, psychosomatically. That's why we study the, the the constitution of the planets. Okay, if it's dry, what does it bring? If it's moist, if it's very moist. So there are nuances to this understanding, right? There is no one fixed way to look at this. Now, the first 12 degrees of Pisces belongs to Venus by term or by bounds, as it is called in ancient Hellenistic astrology. So Venus, 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 the principle of connection, the principle of union, the principle of uh, peace, love, okay? So that's pretty interesting. Although Venus is more romantic love, not agape, which is like A-G-A-P-E, which is a universal love. But Venus is more the romantic love. So, you know, that that is definitely there with this uh, lunation. The need to truly connect with someone romantically and feel someone, okay? Or, you know, getting a foot reflexology massage or even getting your feet licked. Yes, it's, it's you know, very, very uh, valid temptation as of now i said that licentiousness is, is there very very uh, makes itself felt either you take the licentiousness and you you know express it sexually or you take that and try to understand sexuality and that i think has been my journey to truly understand uh, the the sexual angle of human existence and the human condition if i may say now I love the fact that Venus being exalted in Pisces and Venus being term owner. There's such a Venusian vibe and I love that because Venus is a feminine archetype and, and I, I as a as a female I connect deeply to Venus 
although she is the maiden archetype and you know I've already done my maiden uh, bit and I'm, I'm very close to the moon now because this moon is the mother and then you have Saturn the crone I made a video on that check it out Saturn is feminine if you haven't checked it out already very very interesting ideas I bring forth in that video uh, now Venus let's understand Venus a bit so Venus is in Cancer in the 25th degree of Cancer and is opposite Jupiter and Pluto and Saturn. I'll get to that. So this is interestingly the last decan of Cancer, which means it is the Pisces decan and that means Venus is ruled by Jupiter. Yes to that. So this day, uh, Venus is being ruled by Jupiter because of uh, the Decan system. And uh, since this is so much of Jupiter, Pisces signature, we are going to be very dreamy. We may have the urge to escape. We may feel like, you know, the normal world and the normal chores that we do, it's, we don't want to have anything to do with it, okay? You're going to feel that. Now, <coughs> Now, interestingly, Venus happens to be in the fourth term of Cancer. And the fourth term of Cancer belongs to, guess who? Jupiter again. So, Venus is in uh, the term ruled by Jupiter. And this is a lunation happening in a Jupiter ruled sign that is the term of which is ruled by Venus. So, it makes it a, a very interesting energetic exchange between Venus and Jupiter. This mixed mutual reception that I was speaking about. Okay, makes it very, very interesting. The two benefics are out to play. But don't forget, Jupiter is not quite as in, in such a good place as Venus. I'll get to that later. But, so the fourth term of, v, uh, of Cancer belonging to Jupiter gives it uh, a very expansive vibe. Now, Jupiter is dry. So, so there's this difference between Venus and Jupiter. Okay, we, uh, Venus is better in a night chart. Jupiter is better in a day chart. Right? Because, you know, how this works... It's, it's very interesting because, you know, the ancients thought that since Saturn is so cold, he, he could probably do better in a day chart and, you know, sort of, uh, instead of exacerbating the conditions, he can alleviate certain problems, right? So, having said that, this is uh, definitely a very, very expansive, philosophical full moon that we are going to experience. Now, uh, Venus is squaring Mars because Venus is in Cancer and Mars is in Aries and Mars is in rulership and Mars is slowing down. Down, down, down to go retrograde in Aries and that's coming up very shortly and that will be a huge part of 2020 and Venus and Mars goes direct 2021 beginning so you see we are going to have to live with this Mars retrograde this whole year and Mars will be squaring the luminaries of um, Capricorn now as I speak Mars and Saturn are ready to square one another. Goes exact on the 24th, that is in a few hours. It goes exact. This this uh, Mars square Saturn energetic vibe. And we are going to feel this. No matter even if it's, you know, and not exact. This is something we will feel pretty much this whole year. We cannot avoid it. Because Saturn and Mars are squaring each other by sign. And uh, Saturn is going to move into Aquarius uh, in December. And it's going to, in November end, and it's going to meet Jupiter in December. So it's going to be a very uh, new vibe to that, you know, shifting of, uh, shifting from the Earth triplicity to air triplicity. That's going to be very interesting for the Saturn-Jupiter dynamics that's going to play out. Now... 
Venus is also opposite Saturn. And oppositions create tension. So Moon is opposite um, Sun, the masculine and feminine. And Venus is opposite Mars, the masculine and feminine. So we can see that the, the two and Saturn is a crone and uh, Venus is the maiden. So again, youth and elderly. So again, with the coronavirus and the, you know, the, the way society is handled, the Saturns of society. I think, I think we are going to be, I won't say called to task. But we will be responsible for what's going on. If you're not taking care of the elderly, if you're not taking care of the infirm, then you know how progressed and how evolved are we, right? A society and a civilization and its greatness should be judged on the basis of how it protects uh, the infirm, the elderly, the children, the, the women, okay? Because sadly in a patriarchal system, the women have been suppressed. Look at astrology. All of the, the planets are mostly masculine. Where are the feminine uh, archetypes? Moon and uh, Venus. The maiden and the mother. Where is the crow? Why is the crow being forced out, being pushed out? I think Saturn, Saturn's job to go back to Capricorn and have this difficult conversation with Mars. Mars is youth, you know. So youth and uh, the elderly, they're directly, you know, sort of squaring one another, 90 degree aspects that ultimately call for mastery and resolution. So a society must protect all of its citizens, even the immigrants actually, right? So uh, we've got the whole vibe of, of this video actually is set by Mars Square Saturn. Very, very strong energy and we are going to feel it. We can't ignore it. It's it's something we're going to have to deal with. So better find out what houses they fall in so you understand how to work with this, you know. Now let us understand Jupiter. Right, I'm going to explain the term of Venus a, a bit, uh, but let's just get to Jupiter because we've spoken so much about Venus. Jupiter is in detriment in Capricorn and uh, I mean this is not a place Jupiter can bring his magnanimous grandeur and you know unadulterated growth. He can't because Saturn is constriction and Jupiter is being ruled by Saturn. And essentially Jupiter is also conjunct Pluto. So uh, I read that Austin Kopak had said that Pluto acts like the nodes in a sense that it makes all the planets it touches radioactive. So it's going to make uh, Saturn radioactive and the dullness of Saturn and when, once Saturn uh, becomes radioactive, it's going to reveal to us uh, the message of Pluto. And that got me thinking that was very sublime. It's beautiful actually. So because of this Venus-Jupiter opposition uh, and Mars and Saturn and all of this action going on in cardinal signs, we see a lot of cardinal movement, okay? Although this uh, lunation is an immutable sign, but we see a lot of cardinal movement because just so many luminaries are in cardinal uh, signs, right? Now, uh, Cancer and Capricorn especially, this is profound movement with these and Jupiter is sort of undergoing its own radioactive change because of Pluto and Pluto is touching Saturn is touching Jupiter and is changing the greater benefic and the greater malefic Pluto is a lot of the underworld Hades so, you know all of this is coming up for Saturn and Jupiter to understand and assimilate, which is going to be very interesting to see how it all pans out, how the, the mystery unravels itself, right? Now, Jupiter is in Decan 3 of Capricorn, which is interestingly ruled by Mercury. So, 
And if you look at Mercury and Jupiter dynamics, they sort of oppose each other's signs. So that's pretty interesting. Now, fourth term of Jupiter, of Capricorn, where Jupiter is placed, it belongs to Saturn. So again, Jupiter is not only ruled by Saturn in domicile, uh, Jupiter is also ruled by Saturn through term or bound. Okay, now that that brings a very Saturnine vibe to the whole nation, very Saturnine vibe to everything. And uh, this fourth term is pretty malefic of Capricorn. It is severe, cheerless, alien, unlucky with children. Okay, unlucky with children, square to Venus and Venus ruling sexual uh, organs, reproductive organs, there could be abortions. Okay, there could be unwanted pregnancies. So be careful of that or even, you know, unlucky with children. So that's something to think about. And brothers. So feuding with brothers could happen from uh, Jupiter pulling this energy from uh, the third term. Okay, the fourth term, which belongs to Saturn. Uh, bloody and destructive, cold, pitiless, standoffish, malicious, slow to act, but tricky. So tricky component, tricky because it's ruled by Mercury this day can. And Mercury is often, this Mercury the psychopomp is oftentimes known as the trickster. So that, that tricky energy is there. Now, let us understand the Venus term a little better, okay? Now, so Venus, as I said, is in 25 degrees of Cancer, opposing Jupiter, who is in the fourth term of Capricorn, Venus in the fourth term of Cancer, which is ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter is ruled by Saturn, okay? So ultimately, Venus is also feeling Saturn's energy, and Venus is opposing Saturn. So you see how, how all the dynamics, it's, it's playing out. It's beautiful, actually. Now, uh, so this Venus term is very benefic because I told you that Cancer is feminine, moist, ruled by the moon. Uh, it's where Jupiter is exalted. It's where Saturn is, um, you know, in detriment. It's, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's where Cancer, uh, Cancer is where Mars is in fall because Mars rules Capricorn. So, you know, direct action, the fieriness of Mars cannot handle Cancer. So this is a very benefic term, like I said, and the significations of this is kingly, imperious, glorious, judging, temperate, uh, entirely noble. So Venus is bringing forth this very noble energy signature, okay, the, the uh, self-sacrificial side of Pisces, being noble, helping, right? Now, now let us understand the term of Venus on, and the, where we have the full moon, where we have Luna opposite the sun in Virgo. So this is the first 12 degrees of Pisces belongs to Venus. So, you know, you immediately understand it's a benefic energy signature. It's not a malefic. And um, it's cheery, fecund, downward uh, trending because, you know, it's receptive, luxurious, living graciously, greeting with a friendly uh, greeting, meeting with a friendly greeting, celebrating, loving, uh, making progress without effort, dear to the gods. So, you know, immediately understand that the term on which this relation is happening is a very benefic term. So it's 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 bringing out the exalted, more uh, you know Neptunian vibe of Venus. Just the fact that it said dear to the gods, Neptune is Varuna. Okay, gods like god. Now, uh, if you understand, if you look at Pisces, right? Pisces, Venus exalted, ruled by Jupiter, 12th sign, mutable water. Mercury being in detriment, lack of clarity, lack of analysis, lack of understanding money maybe. Okay, lack of understanding maybe technology, how to improve your technical expertise, possible. Uh, 
and Neptune is the Martin ruler and Neptune is the higher octave and Venus is so very active in this lunation. Uh, also, if you look at Vedic astrology, Ketu rules Vedic astrology or the south node of the moon immediately tells you how spiritual the energetic vibe of Pisces really is. It's a very spiritual energy. Uh, like we were talking about fornication, so Venus rules the sexual organs, the reproductive organs, kidneys, throat, thyroid, upper neck, face, eye, skin endocrine systems, hormonal systems, so there could be imbalance with these things, okay, and, and that could be a uh, potential challenge for some, some people, like I said, feet also, uh, hunchback, so correct your posture this full moon, sit straight, breathe, connect ground, there is no grounding, grounding wandering everywhere, the mind, the, the concentration, grounding is needed. Okay, now let us understand the sun in Virgo. So the sun being in Virgo is opposite the moon. So the sun and the moon are creating a tension, the polarity between the feminine and the masculine. There is a, a tense aspect that's formed between them. Sun has no essential dignity in Virgo because sun is diurnal, fire, and Virgo is, you know, mass, feminine, and sun is masculine, Virgo is dark, dry, and sun's also dry, but Virgo's earth, and sun has no, sun can't express himself in Virgo, so you'll see that sun in Virgo people are, also have a lot of conflict, they can be very, very conflicted. Now, the sun is also in Deccan 1 of Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury. Mercury not only rules Virgo, Mercury is exalted in the astrological sign of mutable Earth, Virgo, right? Now, let us understand the, the temperament or the humors, the astrological humors. Sun in Virgo is dry, hot. Moon in Pisces is moist, cold. Uh, Mercury in Virgo, dry, hot. Venus in Cancer, moist, cold. Mars in Aries, dry, hot, very dry, very hot. Jupiter in Capricorn, dry, cold. Okay, dry, cold. Uh, Saturn in Capricorn, cold, dry. So, uh, extrapolating from this information, we can see that for uh, luminaries are in dry and hot uh, humans. So this means that there will be fires and we've already had this really bad fire in California where we had the burning of the big basin redwoods, something that I, I wanted to visit, okay, and I also had a dream about this very place. And I think it's it's time to make a video about that. I had a dream about a man also in America. So I might make a video on that. But that's not what I'm going to talk about now. Now, uh, so this is California's oldest state park. So can you imagine what 2020 uh, is bringing? Now, the moon is conjunct the fixed star scat. Okay, SCAT is at 0909 of Pisces, right? And SCAT is of the nature of Saturn and Jupiter. Now you understand how Jupiter and Saturn are so, so, so closely uh, enmeshed or embedded in the psyche of this full moon in Pisces, right? Now, the significations of fixed star SCAT, SCAT, I'm a scat man. Like that. No, it's not that actually. But of course, in the fetish world, scat has a completely different meaning. But you won't dwell on that. So, dignified, pious, conservative, inquisitive, retentive, inquisitive. You know, Jupiter, Saturn, put them together. Inquisitive, for sure. Uh, when you have moon conjunct this fixed star scat, SKAT, 
you may get a whole bunch of new friends, people in public offices, not really big or anything, but just people who can help you out, people who are compassionate, who can connect with you emotionally and give you valuable gifts, help you in your, you know, in your social position, help you with uh, introducing you to the correct people. Also, if you're looking to fall in love, you may find the love of a very respectable, refined, sophisticated, uh, respectable woman at this time because of this fixed star, scat, conjunct, uh, the full moon. Actually, my moon is also conjunct the fixed star scat. So that makes it very, very interesting. Now, this is taking place in the 27th Munzil of the moon. The, I'm getting absolutely obsessed with the Munzils of the moon. There's just so much to talk about. Uh, this is called Algarve in Picotrix. Almuehar, Almuehar, Almuehar. A L M U E H A R Al Muehar Al Muehar Al Muehar Okay for seventeen to seventeen eight of Pisces and uh, when astrological magis make astrological talismans uh, oftentimes they look at the property of a Munsell before they make the said talismans and this uh, Munsell the properties are uh, it increases merchandise, acquires profit, that acquisitive side, unites allies, increases harvest, heals illness, destroys richness, uh, riches of anyone, okay, X, Y, Z. A lot of baneful magic can be done with this. Uh, impede building of buildings, you don't want that building built right next to you, you know. But I spell when the moon is crossing this manzil of the moon and it will work. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, and uh, to put travelers on sea in peril. You know that merchant navy guy you hate? You can put a curse on him. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Curses are bullshit. Baleful magic is just nonsense. I don't believe in that, okay? I don't believe in doing harm to anyone. Even if you are my greatest enemy, I wish you all the best. I send you only love. There is nothing else you know there now uh, it also prolongs the incarceration of uh, fugitives so that is something to do and you can also make evil for anyone you wish to this month so gives the astrological magi such power it is also known as Alcharya or Ahalgal Gwad Ahalgal Gwad Ahalgal Gwad Alfark Alkani. Very, very interesting. Now, to the final segment of the show. The Sagan symbol is an aviator in the clouds. And um, this is a 10. Pisces 11th is pilgrim seeking illumination. And that's on my moon. So I love these two. Uh, Sabian symbols. Six to ten of Pisces is essentially about integration. Okay, as Daniel Rudyard puts it, it's about integration. Uh, the keynote got me thinking. Our ability to develop powers and skills, which by transcending natural limitations, allows us to operate in mental and spiritual realms. So we are literally flying with our head above the clouds with this full moon in Pisces. And uh, let us take a moment to say a prayer for everyone suffering, for all the trees that were burned, for all the animals that suffered, for all the people who died, for all the wrong that happened in 2020. Let us come together, divine together, divine together. Let us heal the earth and make a difference. Thank you so much. Join me for part two where I will do the tarot reading for the 12 astrological signs. Don't miss it. See you soon.